In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of Sunday Mass, and I welcome you who are here at church, and also those who are watching A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you, and you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who search hearts, searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be linked to a man who sowed good seeds in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? Where have the weeds came from? He answered, an enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning. But I gather the wheat into the, my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. One hot day perhaps as today we have the beautiful weather, a woman from rural parts of the country took the wrong train to the New York Botanical Gardens. She ended up walking through a pretty scary neighborhood in the Bronx. Frightened and not quite sure where she was, she began rushing from one corner to, to the other, checking the street signs and trying to get her orientation. Suddenly, a bus driver stopped and opened the doors for her. Do you know where you're going, lady? With her eyes bugging out, she answered, Botanical Gardens, but I don't have the right change. Get in. I will take you there, the bus driver said, smiling. As the lady in question, Barbara Taylor, wrote of this memory, God drove a bus in the Bronx that day. Yes, God drove a bus in the Bronx that day. And Barbara Taylor happens to be a spiritual writer. She wrote many beautiful spiritual books. She recognized God's presence 
in the kindness of this bus driver. Even in the midst of her fear, even in the face of being terribly lost. During this last couple months, we have felt lost and continue to question the future due to our health crisis. We must be honest about this. We often feel like the lady in question, running from one side to another, trying to make sense of all of it, and trying to predict the future. The one only way to cope with some peace is to have a spiritual perspective. Our goal is to find God. God is the good news. God is the good news in the middle of this time of feeling lost. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us the parable about the good seed and weeds growing up together. Good seed and weeds together are very much our experience now. Even as the weeds of a virus, social unrest, economic un uncertainty, and so many other issues sprout around us like weeds. We know that God continues to sow the good seeds. Our prayer is the way that we discover good seed among the weeds. St. Paul writes in the second reading that the Spirit comes to aid us in our weakness, for even when we do not know how to pray, when we feel lost, when we feel frightened, the Spirit prays through us. The Spirit searches our hearts and our minds and helps us to see God in this very challenging circumstances. Prayer offers us the opportunity to have hope in God's presence and to discover God's presence in all things. You may have a question. Hey, Father, but how to accomplish it? When we feel lost, frightened, or challenged, we can turn to God and ask honestly, God, what is good or true or beautiful in this situation? How I can find the good seed in these circumstances? St. Augustine teaches that God is discoverable through whatever is good or true or beautiful. Often, we f first what we see is the weeds. Or we cannot tell the difference between the good seed and the weed. God's Spirit is our helper and our aid who gives us hope and the eyes and the ears, and the hearts to see what's good and true and beautiful. And one thing, nobody can do this for you. The task is left to us in our own individual prayer. the prayer which comes from our hearts. Because God always whispers to your heart. God always shows us 
what's its true, beautiful, and good. So I invite you and myself, the next time we feel lost, frightened, or challenged, to ask in prayer to see the truth, the beautiful, and the good in all those situations or moments when it's all complicated in our life. God promises there are always good seeds among the weeds. On the day we pray, we may discover perhaps not God driving a bus, but God driving God's Spirit to help us discover God's truth, beauty, and goodness. God will open the door for us through prayer and say, get in. I will take you there to that place of peace. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God reaches to us with saving love. May these prayers for church would reflect the love we receive. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For all religious and civic leaders, may they be granted wisdom to guide your people during this global health crisis, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who strive for peace and justice, may we come to understand that we are brothers and sisters and work toward the flourishing of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safeguarding and dignity of all human life from conception to natural death, including those persecuted because of race, creed, and nationality, or lifestyle, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom for all those who work to find solutions for worldwide health issues, and for generous, open spirits as we adapt to new practices for public safety, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of the beauty of creation and the healing, peaceful gifts that nature brings, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are seriously ill, hospitalized, or homebound, and all those who care for them, especially healthcare workers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and now live with the Lord, and also remembering in a special way all the people of the parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you unite your people with love. Hear the prayers we offer for the church and the world through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are one God, living and true, existing before all ages, abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many for them by the glory of your light. And so in the, your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltations, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form men in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might give dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave yourself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might life live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the fullest. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of death, and we proclaim his resurrection and his ascension into the right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that they gather into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, religious, and those who take part in, part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O loving Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles, saints, and in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace nowadays, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the wave of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For communion, we'll have two sections. I will show you the first, this section will come and receive, and then the other. And at this time, we are praying together with the spiritual communion. I make a spiritual communion. I receive with all my mind and heart, body and soul, your real presence. I believe that you are always closer to me than I am to myself yesterday, today, and forever. May your real presence enable me to be love in action. Amen.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. You may be seated for a moment. So I would like to invite you to watch, like with the whole diocese, there are two uh, events which will be happening from uh, our cathedral in Patterson. The first is this week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. There will be live stream of the Chrism Mass. You know that the Chrism Mass is when the bishop is blessing the oils which are used throughout the year for all the sacraments. And uh, we didn't have this opportunity because of the health crisis, uh, so that's why it was moved uh, to this, uh, this Wednesday. And it will be a beautiful thing if you would like to watch. That's, we will have the link on our website, and that will be great. And the following week, there will be ordination to the priesthood uh, on Saturday, August 1st, at 9 a.m. And... Uh, there are five uh, deacons who will be ordained to the priesthood, who will be serving in our diocese, and that's a great joy for our diocese. Uh, the following Sunday, August 2nd, uh, I will not see you, we will have Father Jack, because uh, not that I'm going for vacation, but because I, I was invited, and that's a huge privilege to preach on the first mass of one of, uh, of these to be ordained priests. Uh, so that's a huge privilege and, and honor, and it's in Chatham, so it's a little bit uh, far. Uh, so you will not see me here, but I'm, I'm here <laughs> uh, with you. Uh, I will be spiritually connected with you and with Father Jack at the Mass. And also, please like uh, our social media pages like Facebook or YouTube. And also, I think like, you know, all of you already signed up for uh, flock knows those who are here, but those of you who are watching, you may uh, sign up for our flock notes, so you uh, receive all the uh, greatest news about our parish, and also sign ups for our masses um, throughout the week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, watching with us, spending the you know, spiritually connected, and let's continue to do the good. Uh, works, and also asking God to show us the good seeds which He is sowing so bountifully, even in this time when we feel lost and afraid and uncertain. May you have a blessed week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass ascended, go in peace and pray as you stay and are connected with God.